Hey guys, Robin Georgia here with you, aka VHS82 Apostrophe, with my ongoing A Closer Look into the X-Files Season 2. This is Episode 21, The Colorash. If you want to go with one pronunciation that I heard a minute ago, uh, you may just want to look at it and it say the Colorasi or something like that, but Colorash. That was a pronunciation I got. But this one is Michael, uh, if you say it, Viger? Viger? I just say that. Star Trek, the motion picture, if you get that. Anyways, um, uh, V-E-J-A-R, Michael Beecher, that's it. Um, but anyways, uh, he directed this episode, and Sarah B. Cooper um, comes in with uh, with the writing. Uh, I want to say, too, it's the first episode. Burke, is his name Burke? Um, geez, I looked right before I did this. Um, digital imaging he's uh it's his first episode he's Mulder's go-to for digital imaging when he wants to see pictures magnified and made much more clear uh he goes to that guy he makes his first debut here in this uh in this episode uh, April the 14th 1995 it first drops um normally when I you know go throughout the week I usually get a few viewings in before my normal Sunday morning viewing uh, but this week was a strange week, and I just, uh, the only viewing I got was actually just a little bit ago. Uh, this is a Sunday, of course. And, of course, I am completely and absolutely under the weather. I feel like, I just feel miserable, absolutely miserable. So, I apologize ahead of time. Um, if I don't feel too, uh, don't come across as too enthusiastic, um, I, I just feel like crap. So, um, this is a this is a pretty good episode, man. Um it's sort of, I mean, I guess it's a story sort of pulled out from, you know, things like The Omen meets The Exorcist, I guess, something to that effect. Um, would, you know, with the ghost like, you know, sort of interwoven in. Um, maybe demon. Ah, uh, well, it's, it's not, they don't really don't explain it. They do, they do get an expl explanation. Um, but in terms of the evilness of this entity, so you get a, you've got this accent, absolutely horrific. Now I should say a couple things here. Um, Chris Carter had to spend quite a bit of time in the editing room because he was having a really hard time getting the final cut past um, 20th Century Fox, uh, the studio. They just um, had a real hard time with the content. Um, it opens up with a little child um, who gets uh, ultimately run over by a train at a park, um, carnival-like park, whatever, amusement park, something like to that effect. Um, and uh, But seemingly there's a mystery here connected because although to everyone around, uh, he seemingly just walks onto the tracks of his own uh, cord, um, we find out later through the digital imaging process that apparently there seems to be a electromagnetic image that sort of supposes the idea that something, someone, um, led and pushed ultimately, well, got him out onto the tracks. Um, so this is, um, this is a horrific, horrific accident. Um, so... When this, um, I can't remember exactly what it, it, the catalyst is for this to fall on Mulder's, you know, fall into Mulder's hands, but ultimately it does. And ultimately he seeks out a friend who does, oh, because the dad works for the State Department, that's what it was. So he had the ability to bring more attention than normally might be to something like something that appears to be just an absolute accident. So what do you got here real quick is you got, uh, you got a couple that are at the park, uh, with their two, uh, little ones, one that's really super little. And that's the one who gets tragically killed. But the other one, Charlie, he seems to have some weird thing going on with him. Um, he gets upset pretty quick when, uh, and, and it seems like, you know, the parents are sort of kind of catering to the younger one. Uh, he loses his balloon, so they take Charlie's, and he's not too thrilled with that. He don't want his ice cream, and it just, you just, you know, you just kind of, kind of have that laid out there, right? And uh, well, the mom takes the little one into the bathroom. Now she does something sort of weird. Well, I guess maybe it would be more weird today. Um, she has the baby in a harness or whatever, but she has a harness um, strapped or tied off, whatever, um, buckled to um, the, um, the the post that holds up the the sink. Um, so she's actually in the stall going to the bathroom.
singing to her child, but her child is outside, so she can't really see her child unless she bends way over and looks under the, the door, which, yeah, I don't think you would ever do that today. Um, because somebody, somebody could really just come in and grab your kid, and before you even knew what happened, um, there's there's nothing you probably could do. Um, especially you're in such an un compromising position, right? So he um, suddenly she looks under and she sees a harness on the floor and she's like, "What the crap?" So she goes out. And she starts, you know, that starts the process of looking for him, right? And they uh, when they finally catch up, it's too late. Um, he is wandering off towards uh, the tracks where the train is coming. And before anyone can, it's, it's sort of like a scene out of a pet cemetery in a way, um, before he can, anyone can do anything about the tragic accident. Well, Charlie just sat there, stands there with a sort of look on his face, like, but there's something else going on here um, that we'll find out. And so, um, and so much of the entire story revolves around this family that is uh, replanted in the U.S. Probably as a result of probably dad who works with the State Department. He was in Romania, apparently, and that's where he got hooked up uh, with this girl. Um, they formed a family unit, had some kids, uh, came back to the United States, but they brought mom along with. And this is a family, uh, at least on her side, steeped in Romanian um, culture. And he, the one thing about this episode, when I first watched this episode, I'm thinking to myself, first, at least aesthetically, I'm thinking to myself, Eastern... Uh, mystical Eastern Orthodoxy, because ultimately there's called in an exorcism of sorts. It's not really an exorcism, because it's not Eastern Orthodoxy. It's more this kloroch. Uh, and when you read about it, it more has to do with music and dance, a ritualistic and a thing. And apparently they were actually um, not allowed to take communion by the church. Uh, there's a hist whole history there I barely tapped on. But I was trying to ascertain exactly. I mean, is this supposed to be Eastern Orthodoxy? Or it's something more else, but maybe more rooted into, um, I didn't see this anywhere, but, you know, more, think more gypsy, I guess. And that sort of really ancient ritualistic type. Uh, and of course, the not, uh, swastika symbol comes up, um, but from its origins in India and that uh, whole thing. And so it's interesting. So anyways, there is a benevolent, not a benevolent at all, a malevolent force, I don't feel good, a f force that is bent on breaking into and, 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 and just destroying this family, man. And so the little one, of course, creates massive amounts of uh, just a shockwave through the family. Um, and ultimately later, uh, the father will go, right? Um, he will be taken and mom has brought these uh, strangers in um, in order to carry out what seems to be on the surface a exorcism-like ritual in order because there's, it goes to the story really sort of, we find out later rooted in this idea that Charlie was born, he had a twin and the twin Michael was born, it was still born. And so the idea was because there was no ritual carried out in order to let that soul go that soul attaches itself to charlie and manifests itself through charlie and it is anything but benevolent it is malevolent um and uh and there's some great scenes you know it almost kind of like you know i was gonna say one of the conjuring movies it just is this scene towards the end where um uh when Mulder realizes that these people are actually uh the strangers who are want to carry out this ritual they want to they want to basically send Michael's soul off to wherever but get it away from the house it is it is an ancient evil or something I don't know there's a lot of it's it's sort of not as there's not a, as much continuity here in the storytelling as you would like but it, the aesthetics has got some interesting set pieces and the exorcism that Mulder allows for at the end so you got kind of all that going on which is really sort of weird now I think about it. And then you got you got the action back home with mom. And she thinks she has brought Charlie home from the hospital. She has actually brought Michael home with her. And so it's sort of a lot of that sort of stuff, right? It's sort of like that. And uh, and so ultimately, in the end, you've got a mom and her, and her son um, who are just being terrorized. Um, and I, I want to say the grandma, uh, she goes to, that is a crazy scene, man, because... She's trying to carry out the ritual on her own. And Michael, uh, who you think is Charlie, but it's really Michael, 
um, plot spoilers be damned. Um, he, uh, she's trying to, I think she's going to cut the, the blood, some chickens uh, for this ritual. And before she can, he gets these chickens, man. And she's not cowering down on the floor and he just stands over with these chickens, man. And he just lets them go and they go right to her, man. They just pack her, man, and just kill her. It's a crazy scene. Uh, so it's a lot of, a lot of weird things that sort of pushed, uh, probably push the envelope in terms of its violence um, and the nature of it um, that caused them to force Carter into the editing room, um, you know, over time. Uh, he had to do a lot of refining and work on this one in order for this one to pass. In fact, uh, this one actually got tagged by the BBC. Um, I can't remember what the rating was, but uh, so he had a hard time with this one. And you watch it now and it's kind of like, well, I mean, you probably won't think too much of about it although you'll, the opening scene is still rather shocking anytime you see a little one uh get you know taken you know like that um is is heart can be heart-wrenching um and so i mean it works uh it works to some interesting uh there's a, a in the end when supposedly the ritual is all done and everything is all you know gonna be fine now kind of thing uh the elder of the mystics there looks at Mulder and he says be careful he knows you now and i thought you know that was a pretty disturbing sort of uh and, and Mulder just kind of i think he looks at skull and she looks at him and you know i, I almost kind of wish they would have returned to this episode um that could have made for an interesting paranormal type situation um episode that would have been pretty cool so anyways um i, I didn't i couldn't think of anything like I mean, obviously, I said, it, you know, it seems like ideas pulled from The Omen and, and The Exorcist, um, but something a little different. Um, but I did remember a movie on my shelf, not too old, fairly new. And I do remember it getting, I do remember getting a kick out of it. I'm pretty sure I reviewed it on Body Bags, but it's hard for me to remember. But the aesthetics, I think if I remember the aesthetics right, the aesthetics are pretty close. Although this is from a Judaic point of view, it is religion, the Judaism the religion is steeped in this um um hasidic jews um uh anyway it's the uh offering you might want to check this one out um I, i'm not you know saying this is an absolute go-to you know but it, you may it may be surprising it may uh in terms of its aesthetics and story um i think if i remember it much um it's it's an interesting uh it's an interesting movie. So, you know, that may fall flat on his face. It may be a great watch. I remember picking up at Walmart for like, I don't know, five, six bucks or something like that. Um, but anyways, as we uh, continue onward, um, um, of course, working out of this magnificent scent, uh, picked up on Amazon uh, for, I don't know, it's 120 or something like that. But uh, I'm so glad I got this and I'm enjoying I'm enjoying visiting every episode. Um, I'm not even sure what's next. Um, oh, man. Uh, let's see what's next. Emasculata. Uh, uh, FM Masculata, I guess, is it? I don't remember that one. Um, but that's the case with a lot of these. Because <laughs> a lot of time sits there uh, from having seen so many of them. Um, so anyways... That's next, uh, episode 22, coming down the pike. Um, check this one out and check out the offering. Anyways, as always, as always, as I wear all my Georgia stuff, go Bills. This is not a dream, not a dream. We might be useful to you.